Today we're going to unbox the uh, Speed Goat by Hoka One. Um, we're going to do a structural parameter testing of the shoe, and we're going to integrate that with our, uh, uh, um, our experience in sports medicine and uh, our uh, observation, our clinical observations of shoes in that same structural parameters, so we can tell you who would best um, benefit from its use. So the shoe today, the Speed Goat by Hoka. Uh, this is a size 10. It's got a, a four millimeter drop. And we're gonna start off with uh, weighing it, getting its weight. So the shoe weighs 11.2 ounces. So our structural parameter testing will include rear foot stability, midfoot stability, vertical support, the rebound index, and we should start now with the uh, midfoot stability. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the long axis of the shoe when it's twisted 15 degrees, and the amount of resistance will be measured in inch pounds. The more uh, inch pounds, the uh, more stable the shoe is in the midfoot, the less elastic. So let's start with this. So we have about 54 inch pounds of midfoot stability. So we'll stick that into our calculator. Good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the rear foot stability. And what we're going to measure is how soft that midsole is under the heel. The softer it is, the less stability, the firmer it is, the now we're going to start to um, test the cushioning underneath the heel. So we'll load this 100 pounds. The more millimeters it takes to get there, the softer the shoe is, the less, the firmer the shoe is, and the more stable the shoe will be. And we've got 10.10 millimeters. Now we're going to stick that into the hind foot stability. We also call it vertical compression index. So we're going to put 10. 0.10 millimeters into there. And we've got that. Now the next thing we're going to measure is the rebound index uh, in that shoe. So what we'll do is we'll load the rear foot to 100 pounds, release this lever, and the amount of distance it moves up will be its energy rebound. and it is 13.78 millimeters. So we'll put that into our calculator. Good, so we have that. So now we're gonna compare this with uh, our test shoes here to classify it uh, in, a, in the category that it should be in. So, um, Let's go ahead and do that. So let me explain um, some of this information that we have here. The rear foot stability was 10.1 uh, millimeters, and that is very soft. So there's very minimal rear foot stability in the shoe. The 54 inch pounds for the midfoot stability, that's in the lower maximum range for midfoot stability. This shoe, had a vertical support of a minus 6.1. And in my, uh, my feelings about this is that um, being uh, um, in the minus 6.1, that shoe can contribute to um, excessive eccentric loading and tension in the muscles and tendons in the lower leg. So it can contribute to conditions such as calf pain, Achilles tendonitis, heel pain, and plantar fasciitis. The rebound index is probably close to the high moderate and uh, or maximal level of uh, energy return. So let's, um, the total shoe stability index is 35.3. So let's go over to our chart to see where that, um, uh, that 
is um, compared to. 35.3 is almost down in the lowest category of shoes. Because of that, um, I would recommend uh, this shoe to be for a, a neutral uh, foot pattern of a person in a, a light to moderate stature. Um, it should not be, uh, and they should have good flexibility in the lower extremity. I do not recommend the shoe because of its minus 6.1 millimeters of uh, vertical support. I do not recommend it for people that have tight calf complexes or that has a history of um, Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, heel pain, things of that sort. So this shoe can really be improved by um, changing the um, unloaded heel to toe ratio and uh, the rear foot stability, and I can show it too. So if we um, double the um, double the unloaded heel to toe ratio to eight millimeters, which is still pretty low for most shoes, and we bring the um, rear foot stability um, down to six millimeters, it's still a cushioned shoe, but it will add more support. So by doing these two things, you raise the overall shoe stability index from 35 up to 62.7. So now the shoe is coming into the high moderate stability. So it's appropriate for more people. So I would say at that level the shoe could be uh, appropriate for a neutral to moderate pronator and a supinator because it has enough stability. And it would also lessen the eccentric and uh, eccentric loads and tension on the tendons and muscles of the lower leg. So to me, this shoe could be improved by um, increasing the um, unloaded heel to toe drop and by decreasing or increasing um, the firmness in the rear foot uh, of the shoe. So anyway, that's uh, how we view the shoe at Opus. If you have any questions, feel free to contact.